everyone. In this video, I am going to go over some ways that you can apply texture, um, adjust shading and highlights in your garments, make them more 3D, less 2D. Um, I'll also go over some tips and tricks on just kind of some unique ways to enhance your garment. Um, yeah, and manipulating color and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, let's get right in it. I've kind of created this basic um, shape here. And um, I made a few small, you know, special details because I feel like there's some ways that we can play around with um, the textures and whatever. So um, one of the things that I want to do for this garment is adjust the shading because um, like as you can see on the sleeve it's just very imbalanced the shadows and the highlights compared to what the actual shape is that I've made here it's just very inconsistent and there's also some um, not great shading happening here in the torso like it's not very defined I don't have anything special going on with my shapes that I've made and just in general, if I left it on the default area here, I just would not achieve the um, the fun things I could achieve with this garment, okay? So um, let's get into it. Now, the, the tool does come with many default shadows. So if you go over here into shadows, um, there are some ways I can kind of adjust this, you know, sleeve but it's so limited and again um, these shadow shapes are not actually really none of them are achieving you know the shading that I need for this shape so that's kind of unfortunate and even if I was to go over here to the decor area and go into folds um, even if I was to apply like say this this right here, it's still not 100% going to um, achieve, you know, what I want. I mean, there's sort of, there's some element there that's kind of nice, and I could probably, you know, change the opacity down, and I could get something here. But these, um, these folds have a distortion layer in them as well. So if I was to put a pattern or a texture underneath this fold onto the garment, um, it's going to distort that, that texture. And um, I'm also really locked into um, the gradient colors, the darks and the lights that are within this fold. So um, it's, it can be useful at certain in certain design choices, but um, if you want to get out of being locked into only using the folds and only using the default shadows, um, then what you're going to need to do is just kind of basically strip the shadow layer out of your garment. And so how to do that is you go into um, the layer that you want to remove the shadow from. And for this particular top, the upper sleeve is really imbalanced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on shadow and I'm going to go to the shadow opacity and I'm gonna turn it all the way down to zero. And what that does is it basically strips the shadow out and now I can, now I can own where I'm gonna put the shadows in this garment, okay? And same thing for the glare layer. The glare layer is, um, something that's sort of basically already kind of manipulated into this shape. And there's only, um, <coughs> well, there's just a couple ways you can manipulate this uh, glare layer. Um, one is you can go into um, your um, brushes area here. And in the brush and the eraser here, um, there are ways you can paint in you know, like say you want to have more of a highlight up here. Um, say you don't want to have it be so much, you know, in the middle here. You can, you know, erase it off. 
you can lighten it up you know what I mean so there are some ways you can adjust that here so you're getting some of this and again I'm sorry I should have clarified that you can do this with the shadow layer as well but because I really want to own the shadows um, I'm choosing to not use the not do this but as you can see here I'm getting some more control I'm kind of getting this glare where I want it to be and um, if I don't want the color it says um, when you're in the drawing you can only have white because of the way that the burn is the way they've set up the um, the way they've set this up but if I did want to um, not have this be kind of white and milky on here what I would do is I would go down I'd click on um, the color select tool and then here I can I can adjust the look at you can have all kinds of different colors um, and this can also be a way to sort of manipulate your garment into being you know interesting texturally and color wise however again <laughs> for what I'm trying to demonstrate of ways you can achieve greater depth in your garment I'm not going to use the default glare and shadow in the tool so for me um, I'm going to turn this again I'm going to turn this completely off okay and I'm not going to um, manipulate anything and so um, I want to repeat that for um, for all the layers you can either manually go in and just do it um, and turn all this off or you can use the clone style option and you can just uh, go everywhere that you're going to be painting and turn this off here okay so now when I look at my garment, I mean, this definitely looks like a cartoon, right? It's extra, extra, extra 2D. But that's great, because that's what I want. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do is I am going to create some cool patterns and textures onto this garment to make it have more flavor. Um, one of the things that's in the tool if you go into fabric are these um, sort of default cotton you know suede leather you know texture layers um, again this is not what I want to use um, only because when you put it onto your garment um, and how you control this you know how strong it is in your garment is in the fabric layer um, the texture opacity you can adjust the texture opacity but we don't have any control like like I would have loved to have this texture on my garment but I would have loved it if it had been in a pink value or a purple value or a blue value but I can't control that um, it just comes in this sort of default overlay which is unfortunately just like this is okay for denim like it's good in certain uses but I'm not making a denim top I'm not making you know a sweater top or anything like that like a, like none of these are really um, what I want to use and especially not for sequins I mean there's nothing very unique or special about these you know it still to me looks extremely 2d but I do want to show you something quickly though if, if you're like oh well I can make it work that's awesome I do want to show you something kind of cool which is if you um, want to use one of these default you know if you think it's really cool like if you see a leather you know or something that you want to you want to use um, I do want to point out that if you click on these three dots in fabric and you hit transform you're gonna get this square box and this square box is gonna allow you to manipulate the um, and get some more unique kind of um, design manipulations for 
for these patterns, right? Um, and you're going to have to go in then and maybe turn off glare. It, it, when you use these fabrics, it also does, um, even though you turn down glare and shadow, it pops them back on. <coughs> I don't know why, but it does. But say you did want to use, you know, for example, even in wool, like say you wanted to use, um, kind of a sweater pattern again you just can go in here you know now it's kind of looking like a hound's tooth you know it's got maybe some maybe some striped lines you know there's some things you can do here but again like I want to show you a different way to achieve this um, in a way that doesn't um, diminish your color vibrancy because what even though this is really cool I have lost my brightness in my beautiful pink here okay so even though this is really cool I don't want to be using these for what I'm trying to achieve in my garment and so let me show you ways to achieve just these these kinds of textures but using the patterns okay so um, one way that I can um, get some interesting texture into this garment without losing the vibrancy and color is I can go down into um, any of these shapes really oh excuse me I'm going to cough for a second <coughs> I can go into any of these shapes here um, let's see even something as crazy as the watermelon. So uh, what I'm going to do with the watermelon, I, I like this kind of bright pink, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in these pattern color choices, I'm going to put down, um, I want to kind of stay in the values of this base color. So what I'm going to do in my color picker is I'm going to go to this base color, see, and I'm going to pick up a brightness here. Um, and then here, I might, uh, I might go darker, but not super dark. And actually, I might drop my value down a little bit more into pink to get more of a, a richer pink, okay? And that looks kind of funny, but what you're going to do is um, in this pattern layer, okay, this is where the pattern is. Um, again, you're going to click on these three dots, and we're going to hit the transform tool and I'm going to kind of make it a little smaller. So these white these white squares make it big and small and they squish it, you know, in different shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make it small and I'm going to now um, squish it into a texture, right? And I can change it up. And what you'll see me doing frequently is because I don't want to, um, uh, sometimes I'll click in and out of this um, pattern box just to kind of reset it to the square. If I feel like, oh, I can't really manipulate with that square shape anymore. But anyway, you can see I've kind of recreated that same uh, fabric texture right one of these fabric textures kind of similarly manipulating with a pattern shape and look at how bright look at how bright and cheerful i have kept my color tones right i've kept my you know the aesthetic of the color that i want right by using a colored shape here so i kind of like this um I'm going to repeat that on the lower sleeve, okay? And another thing that you can do that's really cool to create fun textures in your garment is you can layer patterns on top of each other to create depth and interest. How are you going to do that is you're going to, in your pattern layer right here, you're going to copy as brush, okay? So that basically, um, it would be cool if it said 
you know, copy pattern, pattern one, pattern two, and three. But the way that the tool is currently, um, it's kept it as a brush, which is great because we can do lots of fun things. But what I'm going to do now is I have now saved this basic pattern that I've created. Um, I've saved it as brush layer one. So now I'm going to move pattern on top of this, okay? And um, I'm I want a new pattern. I want to add an I want to add more. So now I can go in to any of these, you know, any of these shapes or whatever here. Like say I wanted to do that, and I want to keep it in my I want to keep it in my colors, you know, or go a little bit brighter. Maybe this one's just a little bit darker. Okay. And now this is sitting on top and I've sort of created this interesting design. I can um, change the opacity of it so it's not so strong. And again, I can go in here and I can transform it. I could make it, you know, so then it's more of a texture. Again, just more of a texture layer. I can stretch it out. I can twist it around. I can, you know, there's so many things you can do um, to create a fabric. Because this is not really about the shape of the garment. This is about how are you creating an interesting textile for your garment, you know, to have. And maybe you do just want to have a pretty, you know, floral uh, on top. Well, that's great. Um, just pick one of these that you like. <laughs> and, you know, maybe we'll do this. And maybe you want it to be small. Maybe you want it just an element of it. If you want it to be more lacy, maybe you go a little bit brighter. Okay. So say you want to have something pretty like that. Oh, now look at what I just did. This is a very important thing. I just copied, I just copied everything that I had done on my upper torso onto my right lower sleeve because I wanted this um, floral to be sitting down here so that these are matching. But it erased the pattern I just had had underneath. And you want to know why? Because you have to make sure that wherever you're copying, you know, to be fast, wherever you're copying, you've done copy as brush, you've protected this bottom brush, uh, this bottom pattern as a brush. And then now I can go into the upper torso and copy. And look, I haven't lost it, okay? So that's looking kind of fun, right? <clears throat> so now I want to add some textiles um, to the sleeve. Um, that's very busy. I don't want that. Uh, maybe I want something more, you know, maybe I want to get a texture going here. How would we do that, you know? <clears throat> There's so many things we can do. It's just we're just gonna play around we're just gonna have some fun but see I can make it it's not interesting how you if you manipulate it down again like look at the square is getting too small for me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click out and then I'm gonna go back into transform I kind of like this look at it's so interesting Look, I mean, just if you just keep playing around, look, I could have weird stripes. I could have, you know, I could even just go the opposite way. I mean, I don't want to have stripes, but this is, you know, maybe in a maybe in a pant in a pant, you want to have some interesting, you know, whatever. Again, I'm just trying to create some texture here kind of like that. I kind of like that. Okay. And I'm only I'm only going to do one pattern on here because I need to do a lot of shading on here, so I don't I don't want uh I don't want to go too crazy there. 
and then I don't want this top to be extra extra busy so I'm I'm just going to um, keep three uh, three design elements here okay so now I've created some cool textures on my garment my garment is not so flat in 2d um, something that's sticking out to me that really obvious right now is this outline of the garment is way imbalanced and too dark um, so I, I need to fix that so I'm gonna go into the outline layer and I'm gonna pick one of these colors and I'm gonna turn it down a bit so it's more just like an edge versus like a real harsh line okay might even turn the opacity down a bit more and let's go ahead and and get that oh wrong 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 again be careful when you're copying your layers um, Actually, because I have so much going on, I can only copy the layer where it matches. So I can go to uh, the upper sleeve and I can go to um, yeah, lower torso. Now to change the outline here, uh, if you wanna be fast about it, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be, so you're in the upper sleeve, you need the outline to match the torso. Just go in and grab the hex code color. You can just click on here and hit copy and paste. Go into the torso layer that you need here and click click down here and hit paste and enter. Okay, that's a fast way to just get that color over. And sorry for my crackly weird voice. I had a super bad cold. I'm still recovering from I had like a month of coughing and so my voice is totally jacked but that's it is what it is okay so now we have a garment that's got some really cool textures <coughs> forgive my cough <coughs> it's terrible I'm sorry it is what it is um, but again like it's looking kind of fun I like it I'm looking from the view here it looks cool um, but it's super flat no shadows no highlights nothing so remember we've turned it all off um you could turn on the shadow at this point and just see like do you like any of the shading here again it's changing the garment i don't like it i don't i don't want to use it you may like it i don't know but i'm gonna i'm gonna teach you guys how to make your own shadows okay so um something that i really love about the having the model here is that the model is already an, an incredible teacher for you um, for where to place shadows and highlights okay um, I'm gonna enable her bra so that we can look at her torso um, but if you um, look at her torso here okay she has very defined darker shadows going across her body here there's a bit of a, um, a light bounce bounce back right here her midsection here is brighter okay and around her torso her chest up here um, highlights on the upper part of her chest and happening here a bit okay so when you're um, in your model and you want to paint your shadows um, it's just important to to kind of be mindful of oh, well, where am I where in my garment am I placing shadows okay so let's start painting um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to the first thing I'm gonna do is drag this brush to the top above all the fabric and pattern stuff that we did because we're going to paint on top of it okay and I'm going to make some extra brushes and um, I'm going to go into the brush tool which is here and here and I'm going to use this um, brush that has the fuzzy edge okay and I'm going to um, pick the shadow color now when you're cut when you're shading shadows are not black shadows are not black um, they're not white um, they're colors within colors within colors okay so for for me to 
to not lose the vibrancy of this color, um, I need to go down into like a darker purple, you know, uh, of the same color. And I'm going to um, increase the size of my brush just because I know I want to start right in this area here. So I don't want to start with a super small brush because I, it's kind of something I want to paint in one go. And um, where the manipulation and the control for shadows is in the um, opacity and flow layer, okay? Opacity and flow. So you always want to have opacity down and you want flow usually below opacity. Um, so opacity is basically um, like how much paint are you going to use and flow is how, you know, how much out at the time are you going to put on. So like how much paint and how hard or how little or how much do you want to put it on. So I just don't want, I don't want to put that much paint on and I don't want to put a lot all at once. So I'm going to see how I'm going to very subtly start painting in some darkness here. Okay. And I'm going to put some under the chest where I know the shadows are. And there's a little bit here. Okay. And I know it's much darker kind of here. And there's a little bit swooping in here, right? And I've just done really subtle just a, a little bit. And you can see though from a distance, it looks quite strong. And now I want to add some highlights because you can't have shadows without having highlights. So I'm going to take another brush and put it above. Um, I want it sitting on top of the shadows. So using the same brush, I'm actually going to go into my brighter you know, so I was right here. So let's go over here to this light color, this light pink. Now I'm going to add a little bit. You don't have to add a ton. I might actually want to get something a little bit more brighter. Because I don't want to have just like a white misty, you know, glare here. kind of need to have, you know, shadow, highlights have some brightness to them. It's not always just like a washed out, you know, white. So I might kind of actually alternate between a white and a bright pink just to kind of get that brightness that I want. And now you can see, I mean, this is, this is off. This is not really the right color for this. It's a bit too hot pinky. You can either erase or there's actually some ways to kind of lessen what you've just done. You can either erase it, you can hit the undo button, or you can actually just click in the brush and change the opacity value to lighten it, you know, so it's not so dark or, you know, not so vivid. I should say vivid is the word I'm looking for. I like the placement of it. I just don't like, you know, there. And say I do want to have some textured ripples or folds. Um, I can go into the points and lines and create some, some slight bulges here. And then um, I can actually get a new brush or drag, drag this brush up. Because I don't, uh, when you're, whenever you're creating a new uh, shadow or something, you don't want to stay on the same layer. Because if you have to erase something and come back, like you're going to be in big trouble if you have to erase something and it's really integrated into the, to the design. But um, I might want to create couple highlight lines here and here and then just create a few darker moments right here okay um, and there you go 
And then I've created it, it, it again, like this is quite bright and dark. Um, I might want to go in and do some ripples here. I'm going to do some ripples here. I don't know what I'm saying. But I might want to change the opacity on those ripples just to... But anyway, I, now I've created some really cool texture. I've created texture. I've created some shadow and highlight. And I still need to do some more up here. So... Um, let's go ahead and go... Let's go up here. Let's go. Let's go make some more highlights up in this area. Sorry, I'm just. Um, Go ahead and let's go. Okay. You can pick a little. So I'm basic. Sorry. I was very distracted there for a second and off, off the screen. I'm still kind of new to making these videos and recording them like this. So I don't really know how to shut off my my life on the other side of the screen here. <laughs> and there's my cat. Okay, um, so what I'm doing right here is just creating some, some contrast at the top of this layer just for fun. So I've created some more highlights and sh shadows. There's still there's some more highlights happening on this on this bust. I might um, it, I might want to um, think about that. Let's make this a bit bigger, and let's highlight this fabric area here because there are some more natural. Um, chest areas there but as you can see like my garment is slowly moving away from 2d becoming more 3d um, and again for the sleeves and for these other things um, I'm going to need to be really considerate about um, how this is done so um, and I want to be, I kind of want to be thinking about where, where is some puckering and gathering happening? Uh, where am I going to be need, needing to be mindful of, you know, where potential shadows might be? Um, you know, what's going to be more realistic or not? So I'm in the upper sleeve. This is going to be kind of one of the main focal points of this garment is this big sleeve here. And so um, I want to be, you know, working on that so let's grab let's do again we're going to repeat we're going to take that that brush way up here i'm going to make quite a few brushes i guess that can be kind of organized so the first brush layer that i'm going to do and you might want to start with highlights or shadows wherever you see um <coughs> placement um you're going to want to start with. Now, something that's kind of interesting, I'm on a brush layer. Look at my color select right here is gray. There's no color. I've got all the colors I've been using in the garment, but this is gray, right? Whatever you do, please, when you come to this brush layer, do not just select in here and go, because what's going to happen is you're going to turn um, this brush into a color overlay. Um, which is great if you're making like multiple colors of something because then you can just quickly, you know, switch 
colors around, but where we really want to be picking our color from here. So once you, um, you're on your brush layer, again, I could switch to a different brush, and each time I switch to a new brush, it's going to kind of be like you, you, the tool is waiting for you to tell it what color to pick and how you want to apply the color. Do you want to apply it as a color overlay or as a color? I just want to apply it as a color. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to select color. And now this is, you know, highlighted in the color. So I want to start with a shadow. So I'm going to pick shadow. I do like this brush size. It's a bit big. I like the opacity and flow I had. So I'm going to keep that. And now I can go in and I can start adding my shadows. Here, okay. And I know there's going to be some more shadows where the fabric starts to fold under. This is usually quite a big, you know, highlight area. So I'm going to put some shadow in, but I'm going to be really careful not to get too close to this edge. Um, and now that I've kind of, and there's more shadow, of course, happening as the garment folds into the under area, okay? But um, I want to add down just a little bit of highlights now so that I'm being mindful of. Um, this garment shape. And again, as, you know, as time goes on and you move the tool around, you know, you figure out your own artist aesthetic and style, you're going to be discovering all kinds of ways to, um, to apply color and shadow. So again, so what I've done here is I've put down, you know, kind of like a basic white where I kind of think, you know, some of these key highlights will be obviously at the roundedness of the shoulder here. Um, but then I'm going over it with this bright kind of color very lightly um, so that it's not some milky white shadow that it has, you know, some color, okay? And then let's go ahead and I guess get a new brush. <laughs> Again, it's, you know, doing that thing. So let's go down here, let's make this brush much smaller. And let's go ahead and paint some some of the contouring, you know, maybe it's at a bit of a curve. You'll hear lots of clicking sometimes. In, I have a mouse. I'm not painting with a brush. You guys can use those pens and brushes. It's all good. This is just what I've adapted to. I think there might actually be like a, I don't know, a slight puckering over here. I'm not going to add too much there. Um, but there is going to be some really interesting, um, I could do some really interesting kind of things down here with the shape, because the shape might have a lot more puckering, right? So you're going to add. Again, super hard for me to sometimes paint and chat at the same time, but I'm just trying to show y'all how to get some of this stuff in here. And it's a painting process. If you're not familiar with digital painting or painting shadows and highlights, it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for you. And there are there are some amazing uh, YouTube videos out there for digital painting and artists, you know, coloring and shading. I highly recommend you watch and, and learn and practice because all of those design principles, um, color theory principles, everything applies to this paint program here. So as you can see, I'm starting to get some more shapes you know shape definition more three more dimension to me this looks very mild and not that dark here 
but you can see when you pull back, look how dark those edges look. I mean, it really looks super dark. Um, one thing I could do before I move on to, like I'm, I'm kind of scared at how dark those shadows are. I'm not loving it. And this is a bit too white, so I want to add some pink in here. Let's look at that now. Uh, sometimes you just have to trust the process that the, the dark and the light is, is good. But um, something that might calm down the darkness here is if I go down to the lower sleeve um, and I go into um, and I add, I kind of jump ahead and add some of the shadow that would be down here. Because this is, if this, if this upper part is sitting on the lower part, there's going to be some shadow underneath that's darker than the other. So maybe it needs to be more balanced. You know what I mean? So maybe I'll just check here. And again, if you're not sure where shadows and highlights should go, um, look at your model. Dark, you know, dark, light. Um, so let's kind of mirror, mirror where that's happening on her, on her body here, right? sort of brightness at the, at the top part here, right? See, so now this is not so startlingly dark because I've created that, that dimension there, right? But I kind of want to balance some of this darkness up here a bit more. So let's go back to the upper sleeve. Let's get a new brush. I think I haven't used this brush yet, have I? So let's just, uh, let's put this kind of extra stuff on a new layer just to kind of, I don't know, and maybe we go just a little bit darker. Again, I'm not in black, but I am going just a little bit darker here, just at the very kind of edge. I want to, again, I'm just doing this because I want, um, You know, we do want some, we don't want it to seem so stiff and we want it to be a little bit loose and believable that it's, you know, you know, got some movement in it. These, these are not really, uh, again, it's not looking exactly the way I want it, which is part of the design process. It's not going to be perfect. Um, but something that I can do, like if I'm really unhappy with these, the reason why I kept them on their own brush layer, or I kind of messed up a bit because I added them into here, but I can just kind of turn it down, or I can go in and... Um, I can turn... a. a an eraser brush on really low and I can kind of minimize this a bit so that it's not so in my face when I pull out so it's more like a subtle see that's a little bit better to me it's a little a little more subtle and it, th these ripples are coming out way too way too far into the garment so I might want to actually kind of make them smaller Okay, I don't love that, but it's going to work for this tutorial. And I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas of, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you create your own shadows on the garment, okay? Now, something else that you can do to create uh, texture. Is use some of the other paintbrush stuff. So, for example, let's go down to these, um, this lower torso, right? Let's make some new brushes. And um, if you scroll down here in the brush presets, there are some texture things uh, down here. And uh, this brush is really cool to use. This brush has got some really interesting you switch the angle up on it 
it has some really interesting sort of organic uh, shapes to it. Okay, we've got our, our brushes going. We've got our colors selected. Um, let's go to the dark. So as you can see, well, it's actually too low. Let's turn it up. So as you can see, it gives this kind of interesting uh, cross-hatching pattern that you can have. So say you wanted to... Um, Say you wanted to create some textures in a garment, and look, I can't really see this. This is all in the way, so you might actually want to turn all of this stuff off and then turn off the model's arm so that you can see what you're doing here. But you see how it's sort of creating this, I don't know, cross-hatching kind of texture. Um, I can go in was our base color? I think it was this. I can go in and soften, like I can put in some shadows and I can go over it and soften it with all the colors that we've been using. And I could now get more of like a, I don't know what you would call this. I can get a painted on textural kind of shadow. So it looks, you know, like fibers, I guess. I don't know what you would call it. But anyway, that's one textural way you can also create some shadows in a garment. Um, <clears throat> just really any of these other brushes. I mean, there's, there's so many ways to create texture using the tool with the way that it, they have it. Um, and say you wanted to add some sparkles um, or some, I don't really know how to cry. I don't know how to describe this. Let me just, let me just do it and I'll show you. Maybe we can describe it as we go. <laughs> so this is like kind of a sequin effect, but not. Um, I like to do this in w as a way, it's not exactly a sequin, but it's, it's a way to add some highlights in here and some movement, some like ways to catch the light, if you would. Um, see, so you see how it's not exactly like a, I guess it's a little bit of a sparkle, but when the model sort of sways in the animation in the game, um, if you have a bit of a, um, these sort of interesting moments of, of highlights here and there. Um, I guess this is looking kind of sparkly, but to me, if, if you're not doing like a very obvious sequins garment, like if it's obviously not sequins, to me there was just some ways to use these dots to create some, you know, highlight it's an I don't know how to describe I don't know how honestly I don't know what I'm saying but that's all good but it's also really cool if if you use um the darker dots too is like to create some interesting shadow it's I guess it's just a way to create to create color dynamic within a shape without committing to like a block of color like it gives some breathing room in the in the color texture like this is so obviously solid right here but if I was to go back like for example like let's go back <coughs> to the uh, to the I think the upper sleeve yeah let's go back to this upper sleeve let's turn on the models arm let's actually just turn everything on But say I wanted to, um, I don't want to lose the shadow. I want to have a little bit more of the shadow. But if I was to paint on more, I'm going to be painting on more. So what if, though, I use this little dot and I kind of just created some more, some more shadow, but it wasn't so solid, right? Um, it's a way to kind of drag, see, it's a just kind of a way to drag up 
some color that's woven into so it feels more like it's peeking through the textures versus you know versus anything else i don't know it's just again these are just options in your wheelhouse for um ways you can create dynamic textures and shadows and highlights okay um, i'm not totally in love with what I did, but I just wanted to show it to you guys anyway. Um, and again, you can also just keep it there, but soften it by using, you know, a low opacity eraser. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so if I want to recreate this over here, we were back on the lower torso. I can also just, and that's a nice thing about having everything on its own layer. Like if you, if you kind of experimented with this, but it wasn't really the direction you wanted to go, it's so nice when it's on its own layer because now you can just, you know, delete it and just, I don't want to have that there. You know, I'm kind of going with this sort of thicker fabric. I'm not going with kind of a shiny fabric. So um, maybe, you know, maybe I don't want to have that. Okay. And let's just turn that down. Let's go over here. Let's go ahead. Oh, I need to turn this up more. So again, you know, just kind of going with the flow of what I had done on this other side. I think I had even gone a little bit darker. I don't know. That's why it's important to uh, uh, do your consistent things like <laughs> before you switch layers. To you don't lose track of what you've actually done. Anyway, so these are some some ways to work with what the tool has and create um, interesting dimension and, and textures within your garment to make it, you know, special and individual and interesting. And um, there are a ton of other ways to create, you know, different kinds of, I don't know what I want to say. Like I didn't want to put glitter and fur into this tutorial because I already have it in a different, in a different video and I'm going to make a separate video just on, on creating sparkles. So this video really is just about um, creating some interesting textures, um, creating some, you know, shadows and highlights. And just kind of being mindful of what you're doing. And so, like, for example, like, one thing I can see right right off the bat in this garment that I've made is that the shadows and the tones of color in my sleeve are now kind of way darker than what's happening in my blouse. And I have to kind of make a decision, a critical decision, design decision right now, if I wanted to kind of make this darker here or make this brighter and have it be like less shadowy and dark. And so, you know, depending on what I choose, I can either um, go into the upper torso or the upper sleeve and I can um, kind of reduce the opacity of these brushes down. So it's just not so dark. Um, that's one way I can get in here and kind of tone it down a bit. So it's not, you know, now it's not like as vividly dark. Um, but maybe you really love that contrast and you don't want to have that. So then you should really be mindful of going into your, you know, this garment here. <coughs> Let's see. We'll kind of find where do we go oh, there. There's the shadow layer, right? So we'll go into our brushes. We'll go back to our fuzzy brush. Get the opacity and flow kind of low, turn off spacing, make our brush a bit bigger. 
and then we will go in here and now now that I know that oh there's a lot of shadow happening in this sleeve here there might be a lot more shadow happening um, in this torso so you know maybe I want to be mindful of that and maybe there's more contrast happening here and there might be just a little natural shadow happening where these fabrics meet um, again I could be making that too dark now but but you know oh wow that is really dark from far away so that's okay I'm just gonna lighten it a bit without having to erase everything that I've done but now maybe it's more consistent with what's happening here okay but I do see some places where I need a little bit more shadow it's always good to bounce back and forth between seeing it from far away and seeing it up close so that you could be monitoring your your values you know but yeah so the only thing being kind of inconsistent is this down here this lower torso why am I having a hard time there it is I don't know why I was having a hard time seeing that for some reason but again I don't want this look at that just created a smudge right <coughs> I might actually want to instead of being it consistent with the sleeve I'm kind of wondering if I should just let's just test something out let's just clone it oh I wonder if I do. No, I don't want that. Okay. Let's go to the lower torso. Let's um, copy the pattern as a brush. And let's, I'm going to put something else down there. There's just something that's not sitting well. <laughs> and again, this is very natural to the design process. Like you might have an idea of something and then just, it just doesn't work quite the way that you think it will. So you might really want to try to stay uh, flexible to, to change and adjustments that you might need to do, you know, as you keep designing. Um, you know, what, what would it look like? So that's not going to work. This is just all part of the process. all just part of the uh, the design process that looks kind of interesting let's see and again I might need to hide all the actually I'm just gonna because if I put a pattern on here I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to adjust um, I'm going to have to adjust a lot. Hmm. And something cool, too, is if you're, um, <coughs> excuse me for my cough, if you want to put a pattern down, but you only want, like, some of it, but not all of it, something that you can do is you can copy the pattern as a brush, okay, and then let's delete the brush, you know, the pattern layer. Just keep the brush layer of the pattern. Um, this actually lets you come in and really edit and control stuff. So what you can do is you can even come in with your eraser now. And you could you can kind of erase some parts of this that, that you don't, you know, that you don't want in here. Say it's like, it's just too much like some of this is just too much and you only want like a little bit of this stuff this is one way to also create very unique and special fabric textures and elements within your garment that make it pretty unique to to you know to what it is or say you want to just like partial erase something like this is just too dark or you want this to be 
lighter in the center, you know, with a nice fade. So again, these are all ways you can come in and manipulate the tool, you know, the, the availability of items and of things you can do in the tool. There's just so many cool things that you can do to create and achieve specialness and uniqueness to to your own designs, you know? And say so you just you just need everything. You don't want to turn everything off, but you want to just kind of lighten the transparency on some stuff. Well come grab your eraser and get in there. Change it around a bit to get it to where you want it to be. Okay? So now you know, again, I, it's not exactly what I want, but I'm just trying to teach you guys, you know, how to how to do this on your own. You'll you'll come up with your own stuff. Um, now, if I did want to add, you know, some dots, you know, and I want to be lazy, I don't want to I don't want to paint everything myself. I'm gonna. There we go. Maybe I want it to be sitting just under there. And I want it to be um, soft. I don't know. It's kind of that weird, you know, in-between color. <laughs> it's very inconsistent and in not matching the fabric of the other parts of the garment, but Again, this is just part of the design process is, you know, how are you going to manipulate everything, you know, to get it however you need to be and paint it on. So anyway, um, I'm not really sure that I love any of that, but this is just a demonstration uh, for you guys to learn how to do all of this, I'm probably, it's going to take too much time for me to actually, <laughs> to actually manipulate this the way that I kind of want to. So I'm just going to kind of, uh, uh, you know, leave this as it is. Um, just showing you, you know, as an example of how to achieve texture, how to achieve shadows and highlights. Um, yeah, and I really hope that that's helpful for you guys and hope you enjoy creating your own garments and textures and having fun. All right.